So I wasn't going to do this video until tomorrow, but I thought yeah, this would be a really good time to introduce this product. And it's a very, very cool product. But uh, I, I've been using the GVM lights a lot in the studio because because of the power, because of the quality of them, and I'm actually enjoying them. And this is the very first time, other than the Stella Pros, which are strictly for me, they're on location and, and so forth. But I wanted something powerful for the studio so I can actually use them. And like right now, I have the... 650 behind the scrim and I'm using that as my fill light. Um, the light over here is, actually just let me show them to you really quickly so you can see. So this one's in a soft box. Um, this is the 300C. Uh, the scrim is above my head. I'm gonna try to manipulate this. Okay, so that's my fill. And then obviously I have the one back here as the rim light. And as much as I thought about this, I couldn't really use this for a headshot or anything like that because I, I need a backlight. You know, I can't rely on, on these lights to just film the backdrop and then post-production it. You know, for me, and sometimes for a gentleman, I'll need two rim lights on each side, pull out jaw lines and so forth. I saw this light come across and I was just like, please send me one, <laughs> you know, because I have to try this. And they were hesitant because they didn't have any. They're, they're that new um, that they have very little stock. Um, but I convinced them. So this is the GVM. Okay, I'm going to use this with a grain of salt pocket light, 6dB. Okay, it's very impressive out of the box. Um, it is very well made, uh, and and I'm looking forward to using this. Now there's um, one quarter twenties all all around the whole head. Okay, um, and I'm not going to do this as a review. I'm just giving you my thoughts on this um, right out of the box. Uh, so this handle here, um, and I did this before, but yeah, put it on backwards because I just want to show you, you know, what this light entails, entails. So there's this arm and it has the uh, receptor for the light stand. Okay. It is, it's a pretty heavy light. Um, and then you can click it for a handle <laughs> um, and, and it also comes with this little reflector. Uh, obviously not a full Bowens mount, but it's, you know, Bowens mount type. <laughs> um, but it is a really well put together light and it is bicolor as well. I think it goes from 2700, 2800 to 6800, I don't, somewhere in that range. That doesn't matter to me as much. You think it would because of my windows here, but when I'm using these lights, believe it or not, the window light doesn't play any effect whatsoever. So for me, as soon as I saw this, I'm either, okay, rim light or my dual rim light or my backdrop light. And that's what I want to try it with today. Um, and like I said, I, I did have this set up for tomorrow uh, as a full shoot tomorrow um, with models and so forth. And I'll still do that shoot. But I wanted today to show this in a professional headshot kind of uh, situation where a lot of people ask me, you know, are you going to use these professional headsets? I'm like, I am so geared in on strobe for professional headshots um, because I need the depth. I want the depth. Um, so today I'm going to try it. It's a professional headshot, but she works next door and she needs a shot for real estate. So I thought this is a great time to try this because if I screw it up, she's okay. She's just going to come back in. Um, or if, if they're not up to par for what I'm looking for. Obviously, I'll be able to tell from the start, but I just don't want to switch everything around, you know, and, and turn this into a strobe studio just for that in five minutes while she waits or in 10 minutes while she waits. So um, I'm going to give it my best go to say, I'm going to use this for a professional headshot and see what it looks like. Um, but, you know, it's first impressions of this light uh, is, is I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Uh, you know, it, like I said, it is, it is weighty. Um, there's a fan built in here. Uh, the, the, the quality, everything about this light is very impressive. Um, you know, I just don't know what else to say about it. Like I said, I'm not a reviewer, so the, you charge it through, like there's a battery built in. I don't know how long it lasts. I don't know how long the runtime is. I didn't look any of that stuff, honestly. And, and yeah, I probably should uh, to give you more information about it. But, you know, if I find them, I'll put the specs below. I didn't really see any specs because it's that new. 
Um, and I don't even know if they want me posting this yet. So I'm hoping, you know, they're not going to be uh, <laughs> pissed that I posted prior to them having stock on these. Um, but they sent it to me and didn't say anything. So I figured why not? <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to put this as a backdrop light. I'm going to try it as a rim light. I'm going to see what I can get out of it and, and see how it does. Um, but you know, it's, it's an impressive light so far. It's, uh, you know, I think it's going to do great in the backdrop. I, I probably won't use this because it is, you know, a directional modifier. So that gives me more coverage. And remember, when I'm doing headshots, you know, I just need around the hair coverage of the bright and the rest I can do in Photoshop in two seconds. But if I have to pick out hair in Photoshop to brighten a backdrop or change a backdrop, that's an issue for me. Anyway, let's get to the shoot um, and, and see how we do. And for those of you that are so enthralled with cases, it's a nice case. It's a hard case. It's the same as the other one. It works great. Very well made, blah, blah, blah. It's a case. Um, and for this, you get the charging cord, but no charging block, the handle, the unit, and the reflector. Um, simple as that. For me, the only thing that matters is how it does in a shoot. So let's find out. Well, I rarely ever do this, but I just wanted to give you after shoot thoughts before you actually see the shoot um, because I did the intro. Now I'm just going to give you some after shoot thoughts like really quickly. So first off, I use the M11P uh, with the Voigtlander 75 Ultron, the 1.9 lens, because uh, I really wanted to try this today. Um, stop down a little bit. I'm, I was probably F2.8, F3, somewhere around there. Um, the lights they handled as you know as well as expected, but I was at ISO 200 because I wanted to stay around you know 300 on my shutter speed, 320, whatever it is actually. Um, and the last thing is this light. So I use this as a backdrop light, and then I switched it over to a, a side light um, because I wanted to try it in both situations. Now, first off, like right off, it, it needs to connect to the app because when using this this knob to turn the power it is like literally by the tenths and it drives me kind of crazy i didn't go into the settings to see if it can be changed uh, to you know to go up to full stops like or full faster to turn it up to the top but it's a lot of turning to get it you know from zero to 100 percent um the other thing is this locks in you literally have to pull this up to turn or to move this and then when you put it back down, it doesn't move again. So like literally you have to move this up to adjust this. I don't know why. Um, and I did flip it around for this part because I had to angle this down when I used it as the backlight or as the um, rim light. Um, so I just flipped this bracket around. You'll see it in the shoot. Uh, it handled well. My power right now, and I've been playing this with this all morning. You know, I'm only down one bar, I believe, or two bars. So the, <coughs> the battery power isn't huge, like long, long lasting, but it lasted. Um, now, as far as for in-studio, uh, you can plug this in and use it, you know, with a, a power like the rest of these lights, um, which isn't a problem at all. Uh, so I'm not worried about the, the longevity of it because I am going to use this strictly for studio. And it was the initial shock of this is a 60, I'm presuming a 60 watt light since it's a 60B. Um, and I'm so used to these giant bright lights at 300 watt and 650 watt. This is like kind of a, oh, that's so like, dim compared to. Um, now the Stella Pros for my, the ones I use for location are still much, much brighter than this. Um, but sometimes this is all you need. So like if you don't need the extra power, why use it? And, you know, when this does connect to the app, and I'm, like I said, I, I didn't really give it that much effort. It may, but the app may need an update. I don't know. I think this is great because everything is right there in the app. It's all one system. Uh, so it is a nice system. But let's, I'm going to take a look at the images and show them to you and, and, and we'll go through the shoot uh, to show you what I did and see how we did and see how the lens did, the lights did, and, and see if this is viable. Um, you'll notice that my subject was squinting a little bit on this side where this light is. Uh, she does that no matter what. <laughs> it's that one eye, she, she's, since I've been shooting her, and this is since 2015 I've been shooting uh, Gia, and uh, you know that one eye always does squint up, but it seemed like a little bit more with this light, so that's another thing I have to watch. Um, but let's get to the shoot and some of the images and, and see how they did. So. 
You know, the funny part about this shoot is it was both a tremendous success and a, com a complete failure, which is, you know, a learning experience for me with LEDs and clients. Um, but, you know, with this client, like I've been, I, I, like I said, I, I've been shooting her for quite a few years and she is 100% honest with me at all times, which is my perfect client. I never want a client to look at their images and go, they're okay. Um, I'm fine with them and not like them. Now, in the end here, I'll explain why this shoot was a complete failure. But as far as the lights are concerned, um, and that small light that's that I'm using to, to light the backdrop, it was fine. It worked. Uh, the lights are great. There is no issues with these lights whatsoever. I'm actually enjoying them for working in the studio. And I've said before, I don't want them for location because they are big and heavy, you know, but for studio lights, they're fantastic. And it allows me to use my Leica and lens, you know, without a strobe, without anything on top of it, just using it as it's meant to be used, um, you know, in, in most cases without flash. Um, cause I do enjoy using a, a Leica just, you know, bare bones the way it is. The lens uh, that I'm using, that's Voigtlander 75 millimeter, I'm really enjoying it. I, sh I stopped it down to 2.8, 3.2, something like that. Um, I'm pr probably close to the 3.0 thing. Um, it's a really beautiful lens, and it, and it did render beautifully. You know, wide open, this lens at 1.9. You know, it does go a little soft, but it's, it's kind of a, a rendering versus not sharp, uh, if that makes sense. That being said, um, let's get back to these lights in the shoot. Now, I, I used it for the backdrop, and now I'm using it as a hair light. It worked both in, well in both cases. By the way, I'm flipping the light because of the, you know, the handle. It doesn't go both ways um, when you're tilting it, so I had to flip it around. Um, but it worked very well. There was no issues with it. I put the reflector on it. Uh, it, it, you know narrowed the light beam down so it's not going all over the place. It just highlighted her hair. Uh, it was a nice light. So that being said, everything, you know, the way it is, you know, here are the images. And they're beautiful images. There's no issues with them. I was at ISO 200. I was at 3.2, but it, you can see her eye there. It squinted. And while I was doing the shoot, you know, I noticed it squinting more than normal. Uh, now, she always has a squint in that eye because she does have a medical condition with that eye. But you can see in each one of these images, there's a squint. That's a problem. Um, so it is a problem for using LEDs on this client. But how can you tell which client it's going to be a problem with until they're in front of these lights? And, and you'll notice that I was talking a lot with her trying to get her used to the lights. I really get a chance to go into uh, what the client thought about the photos. And, and for this one, it was really easy because like I said, she does work next door and the client didn't like the photos. Um, now, the main reason was because of her eye. And as you saw in the, in the images, it was squinting uh, because of the bright lights. And here's the thing, like she has a medical condition where she has a, a, a sort of implant in that eye. Um, and it's normally squinty anyway, but it's a little bit more squinty with the bright light in her eye. Um, and she's not even, you know, aware of it while we're shooting. And she did try several times to open it, but then the other eye gets, you know, even bigger. And there's, you know, maybe she doesn't like her hair, maybe she doesn't like her makeup, it didn't matter. The point is, is the client wasn't satisfied, so we're going to reshoot and, and we're going to use strobe. So all the positive sides of these lights um, for uh, many shoots is a negative side for headshots because I have that main light closer to the subject um, to give the light that I want for depth and, and for a better ISO setting. So for me, I'm going to stick with Stella's in, in most cases for um, this type of shoot if I need a flash slash constant light setup. Um, and, and yeah, I could turn that light down so it's not as bright. Um, but then I'm losing quite a bit and I wouldn't take these on the road anyway because because of the weight uh, and so forth. As far as this little light is concerned, this worked fantastic. It is a nice add-on for this. 
Now, tomorrow's shoot, I'm, I'm going to shoot subjects that aren't going to be close to the to the light. Um, that it's it's more of a fool type shoot, and and it's not going to be in their face kind of a thing. So, it, it's going to be a better uh, a better representation for the lights and how I'm going to normally use them. Um, so just because it doesn't work out for me for headshots doesn't mean it's going to not work out for me for other things. But for headshots, I'm still going to stick with strobe whenever possible. And then, you know, I'll switch over to LEDs if I do have someone that has a medical condition where they can't use strobe. Um, but I just thought that it was, it's good to like say, hey, listen, this is, this is the result of the shoot. You know, I, I called it down to 18 or 19 images. She called it down to three if she had to use them. But it was still at the end saying, let's do a reshoot. Um, I'm going to change up my hair, change up my makeup, and we'll use strobe just in case it works out better with that one eye. Um, because this is representation for her for real estate, and, and she has to be happy with it. So, uh, you know, to have a client be that honest with you and that upfront is really, really important because I want her back over and over and over again. And, and the fact that she can tell me and then, and then I, you know, make her tell me the truth about the images is why I've been shooting her for over 15 years. Um, you know, we've done headshots for many years over the years because of this kind of relationship. Um, and, and you have to build that with, with clients and they have to be comfortable telling you what they don't like, even if it's your work or them, it doesn't matter. I want you to be happy. Um, so that's the takeaway from this. So again, I'm, I will show you to shoot tomorrow and I will shoot another session with, with her again tomorrow for a headshot with strobe. Um, it's going to be a cluster because I have two appointments tomorrow that I was going to use LEDs, um, but then I have to use strobe for her. So, um, you know, it's up in the air on, on how I'm going to do this and, and what I'm going to do because the whole studio has to be switched over to strobe uh, because I have it all set up for LEDs right now. Anyway, thanks for watching as always. If you have any questions, leave them below. I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, for me, this is helpful to sit down with a client like this and have a discussion like this is really, really important. Um, anyway, thanks for watching as always.